Hey there friends, welcome back to Ray of All Trades. Today is another in the series of the bad boy buggies. Today we're gonna call it the uh, Pimp My Cart Edition. It's got uh, halogen headlights in it, and I don't know what the uh, current draw is. We're gonna find out. We're gonna add some rocker switches, eliminated rocker switches, some LED light bars, see what kind of uh, current draw they're pulling, and a ground effects light kit. Uh, it's written in Chinese. I, I guess it says something about adhesion promoter. If I had to guess, it would probably say alcohol swab. I don't know what that says in Chinese, but I guess we'll find out. Uh, it's got a fancy remote control to change the lights underneath. And um, these somehow stick to the bottom of the cart. We'll get these things installed and uh, check and see what kind of current draw changes we're gonna make. So on an electric cart, the life of the battery is your biggest enemy. I don't know what you want to call it, but the faster you draw current, uh, in other words, the halogen bulbs, if they're drawing hypothetical, they're drawing 10 amps and the other ones are drawing five amps of current, both of them sitting at 12 volts, then your batteries obviously are going to run down faster with something that's drawing a higher current. So we want to find out what the new pieces are actually drawing current wise, see what those are drawing and make some educated guesses and give this thing some exterior illumination. Let's get into it and see what's going on. Underneath the steering wheel here is the fuse panel. Just wanna see if there's anything that's written as to which fuse does what. I did not get an owner's manual with this thing. It says uh, bus man and it has uh, what appears to be 12 fuse positions. These are all 15 amp. This is a five, five and a 10. What we want to do first is find out which of these uh, which of these are hot and when. First thing we're gonna do, took up a test light. I'm gonna ground, I got a ground right about there on the cart. Let's go to, that one's labeled as negative. And then that would be a positive running over to there. And that right there should be 12 volts. Okay. Okay, I don't like that. That's way too bright. Let's find out what kind of voltage we're talking about here and get a good ground. Okay, let me go to DC voltage. All right, I know that I've got a 12 volt signal. Or excuse me, I have a voltage signal right there. And my test light, I was trying to use that one. Yeah, that's 30 volts, way too hot. I'm going to chart to cart ground real quick and see if I've got a 12 volt signal. Nope, I'm showing a 32 volt signal to ground. Oh, hey, hold on, what do we got? Yeah, 32 volts to ground. All right, so I need to find out what we're, what we're dealing with here, like where this thing gets its pots, uh, positives and grounds from on this fuse block. I am noticing that it's held in by uh, some screws right here, but all the rest of these are rivets. And I really would like to get to the back side of all of this. It appears that this cover on top might give me access there, but that cover is blocked by this rack. So let me get this rack off of here and uh, we'll reconvene here in just a second. Shed a little bit of light on things. Back side of my fuse panel. I probably still am gonna take that out of there so I can get access to it. I'm gonna pull these screws out uh, from the inside of that box so that we can put this inside our hands, get a little bit better look at the back side. Maybe we can figure out how it's wired. All right, got those screws out on that side. Let's pull this thing out. If I had to guess, I would say we have one side that is ignition and one side that's probably battery hot all the time. It's pretty wild. I, I believe what I'm looking at on the fuse block is that uh, these fuses are probably hot all the time. And then when you turn on the key, these are on ignition. And I just haven't found the ground potential for each one of these 
to figure out exactly what it's wired into, but I'm fairly confident that's how this works. I don't wanna hook up anything until I know where that ground potential is, because I haven't figured out what's going on here yet. But, so with the key in the on position, my headlights work. If my theory is correct about it being these, then one of these fuses should take out that, the headlights. Nope, it's not that one. It's not that one. And it's those. Like I said, what I wanted to do was find out how much current was going through that fuse. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna set the meter to read amps, DC amps right there. The meter tells us we need to change this over. Um, 10 amp fuse max is here. The milliamp fuse is the next one over. We'll pull the fuse out. We're gonna turn the lights off for just a second. If I put the meter across here, it should tell me how much current, I'm not positive I've got a good connection there, so um, let's try it. Yeah, it's not giving me a good reading. Give me one second. So, with the regular headlights, I've got the amp meter across the fuse where it should be. I'm reading 8.4 amps. Let me go to high beams. Well, for just a second, I had 15 amps, but basically I'm running nine and a half amps on high, eight and a half amps on low, and nothing when I shut it off on that bottom fuse. So what we want to verify is how many amps the new lights are going to be pulling so that we can determine which ones uh, are give us the best bang for the buck. Most illumination, the least amount of draw. I should have 12 volts across these two front batteries. Let's put this back. Yep, 12 volts across these two batteries right here, this potential, because I've got a six volt battery, a six volt battery, and they're hooked up in series, so I've got 12 and a half amps. What I can do is temporarily hook up those lights across these two terminals and get some amp readings across those two. So I'm gonna normalize up the lights. Okay, let's put the meter back on amps. So disconnect, I'm sorry. Put the meter back on amps. So DC amps, move the lead to the appropriate spot. Okay, so what I've got going on here, I've got the negative of the light going to the negative post of the battery. I have the red from the light going to the red on the meter. I'm set on amperage. I'm going through this red, out the black, and it's measuring how much current is coming through here to the negative side of the battery and I'm looking at 3.8 amps, something like that. So, so I've got that much illumination coming through this lamp compared to the two halogen bulbs. That's a huge difference, and I'm only drawing half the current, even less than half the current. So we have figured out that we're gonna draw less current utilizing these LEDs than the halogens that came with it, which kind of is a no-brainer. I mean, we, we kind of assumed that that would be the case anyhow. What I do have to do now, though, is figure out where this fuse block is getting its ground from. And do I want to um, use the ignition side or do I want to use the battery hot side? I'm going to say I want the ignition side because I want to turn the lights off when the key goes off. I don't like the fact that these stay on when the key is off. Let me see what I can find either by hunting the wires down or locating a, a, the, the ground that it's using for the 12 volts because these right here only run on 12 volts. At some point, somewhere along the way, there's a, a 12 volt reference that this is hooked to and I haven't found it yet because like I said, when I, when I hook up the meter to it, I either have six volts or I have 38 volts with the key on. So obviously I'm not looking at the same ground that they're using. So let me try to dig into it and see what's going on. Okay, so, so far what I found 
Um, I cheated a little bit. I went to the cigarette lighter that's here in the back and I noticed that the wire coming off the cigarette lighter was like a brownish orangish color. And then everything goes into the split loom, you know, the wiring split loom. And I really wasn't finding anything until I got back here to the controller. On this control box, I noticed that there was a similar color wire, a bunch of them that went to this one lug right here, which is probably the same as that lug right there. I think that that is a, one of my substantial grounds and I can use that, but I don't see it up here at the front of the buggy. So I would like to run a new wire from there, uh, you know, a decent ground up here to the switch area. But anyway, when I turn the key on or when the key is off, I get 12 volts on this entire bar here, all right? And then when the key is on, I get like 50 volts or substantially more. Yeah, 50 volts on this side of the bar. Um, so I don't know why it's got 50 volts up here on this side of the bus bar with the key on. With the key off, it's got nothing. But with the key on, I've got, uh, like I said, substantially, um, uh, you know, 12.6 volts. So I don't know why it's substantially higher on this green bar. I would like to get a schematic and see why. So um, how do I handle this? I can use a relay to control that side of the circuit. Uh, there's a couple different options I guess we have. We could switch the ground, you know, put a, put a, uh, so that the key switch runs, runs to the ground. As of right now, if I'm hooking up a, a battery to this thing, or excuse me, lights to this thing, I wanna be using this side of it because these are all 12 volts. Up here is 50 volts. All of these six are 50 volts at least in relation to whatever they're hooked up to. Let me do a Google search. I wanna see if there's any kind of schematic on this thing. Okay, so I found a website called cartaholics.com and it has a bad boy buggy diagram on it. And what I'm seeing is uh, I found the tail lights and the headlights on here and goes through a, uh, the headlights have a switch, the key has a switch, runs through a diode to a 48 volt relay Looks like all of the grounds go to the negative of the charging plug. So the charger plug itself has a negative on it. So I'd like to see if going straight from that charger plug potentially has the same uh, effect. And I'm also noting that, noticing that the headlights, the ground to the headlights is also exact same place. So I want to see if I can find something that this headlight is actually connected to that'll give me a closer ground that's of substantial size that can handle um, you know that much current because if you think about it the the ground has to find its way back to that battery if you add a bunch of stuff to that same exact ground on that same wire that was only rated to hold the headlights you're going to burn it up so i want to see if there's anything that's close to this wire up front here that can actually handle that sort of a extra extra load so let's check a um, battery ground. Let's check the battery ground here and see if we get 12 volts up here with and without the key. We want to keep checking with and without the key. Well, I can't run it to, uh, can't run it outside the window from here. All right, let's see. On this one, we've got 12.5 volts. On that one, we've got 50 volts. Let's turn the key off. 12.5 volts and no voltage. So that is a 48 volt side of the uh, fuse block. I assume I would have figured it would have been an ignition versus not ignition. I'll tell you what, we will find a way to hook up a, probably a relay so that we can control all of the accessories off of that exact same one. Okay, I did some quick measurements. This was the panel. This had my uh, light switch. This had my voltage reading. I'm gonna move this over to here. There's plenty of room behind this gauge. Because this panel's a little bit bigger, I could do a couple things. I could cut all these out individually. I don't think it'd be strong enough. I kind of like this metal plate that it's on. What I decided to do was take a measurement of how this would sit inside the cart. And it actually has a little bit of a space on that side. So I'm going to cut, use the plastic cutter and cut right, right down there, give this and remove this piece of material. Then I'll take this measurement, 
drop it right here so I can put that gauge over here. So it'll be the voltage gauge, the regular headlights, and then my assortment of my stuff. I'm gonna use a Dremel tool, plastic cutoff wheel, uh, do some modifications, and then I'll be able to pull all this back into the dashboard. Picture this over here, then the switch, and then these sets of switches will be your, you know, in front of there, right about that area right there. Well, I was just talking to myself because apparently you guys stopped listening, didn't even know it. Not sure where I left off, but uh, my switch pack. So I trimmed out for this uh, 48 volt um, signal right here. So when I turn on the key, it tells me what the level is. I've got my headlights. They're working like they're supposed to. The new uh, switches will actually sit right up in here. And I can control whatever I want to control. And it'll all be back behind that exact same dash. I don't like the way that that's sitting there. It's fastened here, but I don't like the way it's sitting right there. I may end up putting something behind that just to wedge it in place. So, I mean, it only had two originally. I think I would like something there. So I pulled the key switch out. I see that there's two wires on the bottom of the key switch, a red with a white stripe and a red with a black stripe down here. Um, it's sitting loose right now because I was digging through there. I have discovered that uh, this block back here in the back is a ground lug. I did put a voltmeter on the bottom side of this wire and I got 12 volts there instead of the 48 volts. I like that. Up here in the front, when I turn that key on, we're gonna use a test light just to show you and then I can hook up the uh, voltmeter. So one side of the test light, I'm gonna bring back here to this ground lug. Other side of the test light, I found a relay up here on this uh, fender well and there's a red wire right here. You can see it's lit up right now. So let me turn the key off. And you can see the light lit up. And the light goes out. So, I've got a signal up here in the front where I want it to be. Uh, like I said, because I'm going to be controlling those fuse blocks right there. What I have is a 30 to 40 amp 14 volt DC relay. Or I have a 60 or 80 amp 12 volt DC relay. So I'm going to use this relay. I'm going to control that relay with the low voltage off of this wire so that this relay will kick on. When it does, it's going to give me the power on the 12 volt side of these circuits. And then I can run my power switch off of these. I'll do my best to describe it as we go. The 12 volt source, right? And which is just a battery. It looks kind of like that. The way it's drawn electronically, is like that and this represents your positive this represents your negative right what i'm trying to do is take this and come down and power a fuse block right this is a 12 volt fuse block um, right now that's what's actually occurring right it's hot all the time there's a battery so these fuse block is hot all the time. Well, these fuse blocks are powering all my lights. Okay, it looks like hearts, but I'm just trying, about, trying to draw a light bulb. All I want to do is utilize the key switch, right? This is my key switch. Um, that's currently coming off of that side of the battery, right? And it's going off to feed something else, right? I want to take that side of the uh, key switch and I want to run it down to what's referred to as a relay. Okay. Now, a relay uses voltage to get energized. So, so one side of the relay is always tied to ground. The other side of the relay is switched hot, positive. 
So when the key energizes, this is going straight to here, okay? And it energizes the relay. And the relay has a coil like that. Um, and all it's doing is making a switch that normally looks like this, right? This is the normally closed side, and this is the normally open side. So when this relay gets energized, it pulls this switch to the other direction. So it no longer has a connection here, now it has a connection here. The idea is this relay to run this coil is very low amperage. It doesn't take much power at all to run this amperage through here. Um, but you can hook up on this side, you can hook up a, um, well, in my case, I can run 80 amps through here, right? So I can run 80 amps of current through here, which is pretty heavy. It's a heavy gauge wire. And I can control that, that uh, large, basically, switch, right, switch, um, by energizing a, with very, very low current. It's still 12 volts, but very, very low current this coil which is changing this switch so if you're looking at the actual relay itself um, let me see they have uh, looks like numbers 85 and 86 I don't know if you guys can I'll try to zoom in I'm hoping this works um, 85 and 86 are what's what's uh, pulling this the relay itself so when you energize 85 and 86 and positive and negative doesn't matter on a relay by the way um, when you energize that, it takes it from pin number 30, which is running on 87A. When you energize it, it moves that switch to number 87. So if you had a circuit that you wanted on all the time, whether you had power to this or not, you would hook it up to 30 and 87A. When you apply power to 86 and 85, it'll move that switch to be on 30 and 87. So that's the idea behind it. You can run a, you can use very, very low current off of these two wires to control current to go through these wires. That's what we're trying to do in a nutshell. Um, we want to control this fuse block with that relay. So I'm going to take one leg and go to here, and I'm going to take the other leg and go to there. I'm just going to break this connection right here. Good morning, y'all. We're back. Thinking about it last night and realized that not everybody learns the same way. So I just wanted to hammer home this, uh, the idea of the relay. I know I had a really fancy drawing and everybody was in awe and all that other stuff, but um, no, realistically. So on this relay, the numbers on the relay are actually printed here. And then these are your pigtails and stuff. So this black and white wire here, it doesn't always have to be that color, by the way. Um, but these two wires are my trigger to tell this relay to change from connected from yellow to red to yellow to blue. And I'll show you how this works real quick. Um, so I've got, a, I've got an ohm meter set up. All right now I'm on ohms, right? Touch the two leads together, it's on ohms. Disconnected, it goes to out of limits, right? So right now, without power to this relay, let's move that around. Um, without power to this relay, the red and yellow are shorted together. The black wire, I have a jumper connected to the negative of a 12 volt power source. And then when I touch the white wire to the positive of that same 12 volt source, you'll see that the yellow and red separate, right? So take away power and you also heard a little click. I'm, I think you heard a little click. So it should be yellow to blue now. Let's verify. So yellow to blue. All right, so now I've got one on yellow and I've got one on blue and red's out of the equation now. Now when I touch a power supply, it's not, how about red to blue? Okay, now yellow is out of the equation. I had those backwards, so um, now yellow is out of the equation, and red and blue don't have a contact right now. If I touch a power supply and make a connection, now red and blue now have a solid connection. That's kind of the direction that I want, so I want to take yellow out of the equation. So remove key source and control this relay with a very low power connection. 
to prove to you that it's a very low power connection, let's go ahead and take the yellow and um, uh, red and blue out of the equation. And the only thing we're going to do is we're going to check what, how much current draw this, this relay is pulling. Okay, so I am still hooked up on the negative side of the relay. All right, so I'm still hooked up on the negative side of the relay. I'm gonna take the uh, red wire and hook it up to the white wire here, which would be my power source for the relay, right? These three are out of the equation right now. It's just the white and black, which is the coil to turn on the relay. Now I'm gonna move this meter over to, I'm gonna try to give you a reading on amps. I have a feeling we're gonna have to go to milliamps uh, to, for you guys to see the reading, but I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. Sorry, I need that one to be, so common never moves on the meter, the red moves. So um, this one is 10 amps max. We may have to move that to the milliamp scale for you guys to actually see a reading here. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear the audible, but you'll have to trust me that it's turning on. So I turn that on. 0 0.150 uh, amps, which is 150 milliamps, which is way less than an amp, right? So a one amp would be 1.0. This is 0 0.148, right? So it's a very small current that this thing is drawing, which um, you're controlling this relay with a very, very, very small current. So you could tie this in to any sort of a signal. But this side of it can control on this particular relay. This is 80 slash 60. So anyway, worst case scenario, 60 amps of current. That's a whole lot of juice. Not to beat the dead horse. Um, hopefully one of those two methods explain to you how exactly we're doing this. Let's dig into grabbing this signal wire out of here, controlling this relay with it. And then we're going to control the fuse panel with this. So that fuse panel that's hot all the time, we're gonna control it with this relay and we're gonna use that uh, ignition signal wire to control the relay. All right, just to keep things clean, I probably could have found a ground up front. I would like to run a brand new ground. There's some a little bit of corrosion on these bolts. The guy did tell me that he had a uh, place down by the beach. Let's take all those different connectors and this one bolt and we're going to combine them into a larger connection. And I'm going to add a new ground wire that we're going to run to the front of the buggy. So, because each one of these in introduces another layer of possible uh, corrosion. So let's go ahead and get that cleaned up and stripped out. All right, we're gonna add my wire to the mix. And for giggles, we're gonna go ahead and insulate this entire, so let's grab all these wires about the same distance and put this shrink tubing down on here out of the way so it doesn't get hot and accidentally shrink early
All right, got it insulated. Let's go ahead and fasten this back on. Keeping in mind that that's battery negative, that's battery positive. Do not bridge across those two. If you don't feel comfortable working around high voltage and high current, then the recommendation would be to shut, disconnect your batteries. All right, we're gonna run this ground lead through the bottom side of the chassis and up to the uh, front of the cart. Pretty simple to do, so I'm gonna shut you guys off for a second and I'll come back as soon as that's done. Okay, time for some soldering. This is, uh, oddly enough, I'm gonna edit it out, but this is my third take doing this, trying to get uh, trying to get it just right and explain what's going on. So I've already run the, the wires up top here and it shoots across the other side. They come down the window channel, right? They come out the bottom here. They come into a grommet that I just finished drilling and installing there. Um, that's the power and ground coming up through here. That's this side here, not what I'm holding here, but this side here. So I've got a ground here. I've got a ground coming from this side, which goes to the front light on the front of the cart. I have a couple, of, or excuse me, I have a piece of heat shrink on here, which is one of the reasons for one of my retakes. I have the ground that you and I ran together coming from the back right here. I have the ground from the relay right here. Let's twist those together real quick. I have another wire we haven't talked about yet, and that is the power that's gonna to go to the ground, ground lights, the ground effect lights, multi, whatever. The ones that you don't use for hunting, but you use for the campgrounds. So let's go ahead and wrap that one up inside this same bundle. I'm gonna pull that relay out of there for right now. Just keep it from shorting anything out. So I've got uh, this set of grounds, this set of grounds. We want them all to be the exact same potential, which realistically is all the lights going back to that one lug on that control box that you saw us run. So like I said, there's a piece of heat shrink tubing here. We're gonna take and, and overlap these two like a pair of scissors. And we're gonna twist them in the same direction as the others. So basically all you're doing is, is interlacing all those wires so that if you let go of it, they'll just kind of sit in a pattern like that. You're just twisting them all together so that they're sitting flat. And then the heat shrink will actually go over the top of all that once it's said and done. So time to fire up the, uh, as South Main Auto calls it, the comment generator, soldering iron, right? Soldering and welding generates a whole bunch of comments. Everybody says you're doing it wrong, but I'll do my best to explain how to solder and what you're supposed to be doing. All right, so the soldering iron is heating up right now. I've got my hand on the trigger. So the soldering iron is heating up. The soldering iron is gonna get to 750 degrees, I think, on the soldering iron. This solder here melts right at about 700 degrees, something like that. It has a, a rosin core in it, which helps the solder stick to the wires. Um, some of them have an acid core, things like that. So anyhow, what we're trying to do is get this iron to heat up the bottom side of the wires. So we're gonna we're gonna press and hold it in there and just keep constant pressure on there. And what we're trying to do is heat up the wires so that we touch the solder on the other side of the wire so that it flows from the, so that the wires are actually melting the solder versus the iron. So if you're sitting here for a period of time and nothing's actually occurring, you can try to just touch the tip of the iron. What that'll do is it'll melt some of the, uh, some of the solder and it'll help the heat transfer from the soldering iron into the wires. But the idea is that after that little touch that you just saw occurs, you want the, the wires to be melting the solder, not the iron itself. If the iron heats it up and the wires were cold, you'll get a cold solder joint and it'll break. And you just see I'm holding constant pressure, constant heat, and I'm just putting solder on the wires and letting it flow through. And what I'm looking for you may not be able to see it on the video. I'm just looking to make sure that the that the solder turns liquid and interlaces all those wires together. So disconnect the iron, just take the solder away, let it sit and cool. And hopefully that third take was, uh, was the right one because I was running out of wire. I kept shortening it up, trying to um, 
make another take, get another take on the uh, video. It doesn't take long to cool down. Once it cools down enough, so I have one piece of heat shrink that was too small, one that was too, this one here is too big. I'm hoping I can get it to shrink just enough. Yeah, that'll be all right. All right, so I've got all my grounds together that I needed to attach. We still need to tap into um, this relay that I found over here earlier. And then the relay is not gonna allow current to go to these fuses and to these power um, until the key switch is turned on to energize the relay. We're gonna solder in um, this white wire, which is the control for the relay, into there. We've already got a good ground. We just want to solder this in. Um, you can either skin this back, tie this on and, and uh, solder it and then tape it up. I prefer to cut it and use some heat shrink and tie it together. Sometimes that wire is so short, um, you really can't uh, solder it without getting that uh, the heat shrink um, hot at the exact same time. So we're gonna do our best to try to keep it expanded. And we may end up having to uh, put some electric tape. Yeah, the heat shrink's not gonna work. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and get this solder better. And we will use the backup plan. And heat that side of the wire first. Some corrosion on this wire that uh, corroded wires don't like to heat up properly and they don't like to flow solder properly. That's where that rosin comes in and helps. And then acid core. So we really can't get that any uh, tighter. Let's go ahead and just heat that heat shrink tubing up so that it closes down. So I overlapped the tape all the way around. The loose end of that tape, where I just finished, I'm gonna cover that with a piece of a uh, excuse me, a uh, wire tie to keep it from unrolling. And if I'm done working on this area, I'm gonna go ahead and put some, it's kind of overkill. This is basically for moisture, but a little bit of uh, moisture preventative helps keep the moisture out of that connection. It's an uh, aviation forma gasket, liquid sealant. And yeah, way overkill for what we're doing here, but okay, what I have hooked up now is the, the relay. Um, remember, we've got it connected to power with the key switch. We've got the ground constant. Take the yellow wire out of the equation. I've got an uh, ohm meter set on ohms. If I touch the two together, I should get it low reading. So right now, red and blue are not connected. So if I turn on the key, that should go to um, uh, energized relay and those two should connect. There we go, those two are connected. Let me turn the key off. There we go. So I've got, uh, um, we've proven that the red and the blue are what we need to connect. And that's gonna be my switch. That's gonna control the hot side of this fuse panel. So let's cut this fuse panel, which right now, by the way, is hot. So let's see if I go to ground off the relay. And then right here, I've got 12.6. So this right here, this is hot all the time. So when I go to disconnect it, with this side of the wire, the one coming from the batteries over there, is my hot side. This is what's being fed. So I'm gonna break it here. And uh, just keep in mind, don't let this touch anything because it will spark. So, and we're gonna use that to break, um, use the relay to break that connection.
Today what we're going to do, we're just going to put a new ring terminal on the uh, end here. We're going to use this as our new connection because this already has some corrosion built in. This has corrosion built in. Um, so let's finish cleaning this up. Put a ring terminal on here and replace that. Just remembered, I wanted to tap off um, to the other uh, switch bank as well. So let's grab one of these, just a fuse holder. We're going to put both of these under that same lug. I'm fairly confident I'm going to need to extend that wire a little bit. Let's go ahead and solder these, an extension on this thing, and then we'll place a fuse in it. I'll tell you what, for all of this side of the circuit, 10 amps is probably all that we need. So we're going to go ahead and put a 10 amp fuse in there. Close it up, because this side is going to be what controls my the four toggle switches that I'm installing. It's going to be what controls that. I need to restock my saw, my uh, heat shrink because all the sizes that I want are all gone. This was a great kit, but I've used up all the common sizes. So this little pigtail that we're installing is going to tie into the power for this, for our switches. So it does a couple of things. It, it turns on a light all the time so you can see where the switches are. And then when it engages it, it supplies power to whatever you're trying to um, supply. So this is gonna be like the whole power supply for all the lights, anything that I'm running off of this, this is all off of this one power supply. And like I said, I put a 10 amp fuse in there and I, well, I might need a 15 amp fuse because uh, if I did all of them, it would be probably pretty close. Yeah, let's go ahead and put a 15 amp fuse in there. Because when we, when we added it up, I want to say with the, our very first light had, what, four amps? Um, probably another two, another two. There's another total eight amps. And then uh, the ground effects lights. Um, I would say I'm bordering on uh, 50, on uh, 10 amps. But realistically, um, it probably won't ever hit it. But if something catastrophic happens, like a wire shorts out or whatever else, the fuse is there to protect the circuit. So you want it to be about 20% um, spare capacity or more, right? So let's put these two on there. Remember this side of that circuit is, is protected by that uh, or is controlled by that relay. So it's turning everything off when I turn the key off, which is not what I had before. Put a piece of uh, shrink tubing on here. I don't want to cut it off because there's a chance that we may end up needing it for something. We'll just put a across the end like that. Something like that. And then while it's somewhat warm, burn your fingers on it and do that. So all these fuses are still um, good. We haven't done anything with those. We are going to put uh, this relay in 
you guys probably won't be able to see this, but for this part, I'm going to fish all the wires through. I'm going to put the fuse panel back in. We're going to need access to these, uh, the, all these red wires need to go up through the other side, back through to where the switches were, because we need to connect all those. I might have to extend this one. That's pretty short. So everything's going to connect through. It's going to, all going to push through that block up there, and then the fuse panel is going to push through this block over here. Here's our switch pack. This wire right here is the one that we installed that had the 15 amp fuse in it. That's going to be our main power coming into this block. Let's get a piece of shrink tubing on there. We're going to solder that together. And something I didn't count for, and I'm going to have to go back and do it, is uh, this ground needed to be tied into that same ground that we did up there earlier. Got to the point where um, we need to start t checking items. I did take that ground wire and uh, run it up to the front and tie it in where we had it. Um, then at the bottom of these switches, the first switch in line goes to the front lights. Um, the second switch in line goes to my ground effects lights, which right now are wrapped up over here on the edge of the dashboard. And my third switch in line goes to the, um, the lights up here in that corner that I plan on using. All right, so the key's on. We've got our original headlights. They work like they're supposed to. Let's see, can you guys see those? Okay. Then we've got these lit up rocker switches. So you turn on the first one and the front strobe or the front uh, LED comes on. And the second one I've got is the ground effects lights over there on the dashboard. And let's see, should be able to change the color. Oh, there we go. Um, anyway. We'll change the color on those at the off switch. And then this one here I've got is the um, the lights up here on the front that I plan on mounting. We're gonna uh, mount this up in here, just like that, so that you can control whatever you wanna control. And I'm gonna take a little bit of time and put everything back together and I'll show you guys the finished product. Anyhow, that's how the wiring is gonna be done and uh, um, I'll show you the outcome here in a minute. Quick update, signal was latching, and I thought that I had a good signal off of um, uh, that one that we tapped into over here. Come to find out this second one on the 12 volt side, the middle fuse, uh, middle 15 amp fuse, needs to have power early on. It actually was a, uh, it wouldn't latch, it wouldn't turn on. So once it had turned on and when I was testing it, the relay had latched, and I just assumed that everything was working just fine until I was able to power it off and power it back on. When I powered it back on, it was the relay wasn't latched. So what I did was I pulled this, uh, I cut this wire out, I added an in, another inline fuse, 15 amp inline fuse, just like it had here, and I tied it uh, back to the hot side of that relay. I know it's a little bit confusing, um, but just picture we had a, a, a hot on the uh, relay, and that controlled the hot to this bus. I cut it out early before that and I have it hot all the time through a fuse. Now the whole rest of this bus is controlled by the key switch, except for that one that fires the relay that turns on the 48 volts. And then by controlling it on the uh, key switch, you can see I can turn the key switch on, it turns on all my accessories, front lights, uh, ground effects lights, the uh, spotlights up in the front, um, turn those off, I can turn on my headlights, um, I can turn everything on and I can turn it off by the key. And I can turn the key back on and turn it all back on. Well, I finished hooking up all the lights. Put the front light down here. This wire here. I didn't find a really good spot. I probably should have tucked this under. Um, might go back and redo that one. I opted to put the spotlights up here on the top. Make some driving lights. And then I've got the ground effects lights. I've got one under here. One under that frame rail. I was able to use the zip ties instead of uh, drilling into the frame. That way, if I decide to move them, I can. Um, wire tucked up pretty nicely. Got one 
back here in the back and then another one down here on the side that's how the uh, that's how it looks that's how it turned out here's a shot from the lights underneath like I said tie wrapped them brought the wires tried to protect all the wires and the split loom things like that and let's see how she uh, does in the dark at least I'll do my best I'll try to turn the lights off in here Use this key switch to turn it on. Here's my regular lights. We blinded you guys. There's a spotlight, driving light. That's my ground effects lights and my high beams. You can turn everything on and we'll do a walk around. Because you guys are probably blinded right now. There's my spotlights, that light, got my ground effects lights going on, up under the floorboard, come around back, the tail lights, got this uh, green LED in the back, I haven't decided, I might end up facing that down, and more ground effects lights, and really high lights, let's turn off, uh, that's my spotlights, my ground effects lights and then the uh, the driving light and let's turn off the headlights so and you'll see if I've got everything on and I turn the key switch off everything drops turn the key switch back on it all comes back on so just like I wanted it to do and when the uh, keys in the on position the lights are lit up uh, so you can see which switch you want to turn on and it lights up like that. Like I said, turn the key switch off, and those lights are those lights are out. If you guys got something out of the video, really appreciate a thumbs up. Subscribe helps the channel tremendously. Another segment of the bad boy buggy. Now time for me to put the doors back up and start working on that loose wheel back in the back. You want to see that video? It'll be next. <laughs>